So this is a demo of Swiggle and an introduction to its core uh, functionalities and capabilities. Um, in case you haven't seen the intro presentation, this is just a quick reminder of, of some of the things that Swiggle does. So if you imagine you've got configuration data that sits in a series of engineering development tools, in infrastructure tools, um, sits all over the estate, um, what we want to do is we want to collect that and consolidate it into a graph-based data model. Swiggle is very good at automatically kind of consolidating those things into an understandable format. It applies virtue control, audit control, securities, uh, allows you to export, do lots of different things. And then as part of that, it has a validation engine um, that essentially is constantly watching that configuration, making sure that um, you know the data that's stored in Git is as high a quality as the data being used for Terraform or Azure or as part of the service now CMDB or just in general files. You know, there's, there's a huge array of different data types and places that they kind of going to be used. Um, and then you've got a series of tools that want to go and consume that data. So you've got uh, configuration tools, you've got pipeline tools, you've got applications, releases, um, you know, be that Azure DevOps, you know, be that Jenkins, be that your own custom um, configurations and manual scripting that you've been doing, you know, whatever it might be. Um, Swiggle sits in the middle and it's either drawing in data from one tool and providing it to another, um, on demand, all driven kind of through APIs. And this demo is just going to show, you know, some of the, the core functionality that, uh, that we do there. Okay, so to follow on from the slides, um, with Swiggle we have the concept of data coming in and we track all of those things as part of this incoming tab. Um, a data model that we then turn all of those files and data types into a structured format and then a library of, of assets that you can then go and use and deploy and manipulate and work with. Um, if you think of the incoming tab as collecting all of the data from lots of different places, Jenkins, GitHub, lots of different repositories, maybe some databases, CMDBs, that type of stuff. Um, and it's it's essentially all being brought into Swiggle. And sometimes data is being added, sometimes it's being removed, depending on what changes people are making. Um, and what we do is we build a data model out of that. And the the reason we're building this data model is, you know, we want to simplify the process around configuration data. We want to apply some structure to it. We want to make it nice and easy to understand what's going on. So in this this example, Eldorado is my application. My application has a series of components that sit behind it. So there might be different UIs. The UIs, depending on what version they are, have different settings. I'm storing, you know, spring setting secrets. I've got some microservices, so dashboards, token services, you know, whatever my application component um, kind of settings are, that's where I'm storing the, these types of things. Um, then I've got a series of environments doing very similar things. So I've got dev, test, UAT, and prod. Um, depending on the environment, depends again on the settings that are being stored there. Those might be from a mixture of different places. So we could have uh, some stuff stored in Git, some stuff stored in Terraform, other things part of a CMDB, but it's all amalgamated into one view as part of this data model. I've then got the infrastructure that it's running on. So if we're doing some infrastructure as code stuff, I might have some, some Terraform da data that's being kind of stored here. I may have some Ansible, I may have um, the, you know, data from lots of different places that, that meets my infrastructure, as simple as like Windows server settings or Linux server settings um, to actual configurable items, depending on what's happening. I've got my integrations. So if I'm using, in this case, primarily Ansible, but, you know, as an organization, maybe we've got access to a few different types of um, integrations that we need to provide data for. And then releases, the, the, the amount of releases that we're kind of going through. And what we're doing is we're applying a level of structure and standardization um, to this data. So we store things as key value pairs um, within this data model. The data model is typically automatically generated. So we'll try and automate the structure of that so that it, you're, you know, there's a one-time process of, of um, you know, making sure the data is in the right format, that we're doing the right kind of stuff with it. Um, and generally the, the data model just kind of gets built based on the files. But you can then apply a, a series of rework trying to apply standardization to these types of things simplification um, in this case with environments you know what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're avoiding drift when it comes to the, the configuration settings so the data that exists in tests potentially shouldn't ever end up in prod depending on certain settings certain allowances etc etc and Swiggle's kind of giving that that uh, ability to separate and segregate 
um, but equally share if you need to so depending on your user roles what you got access to depends on what you're doing um, what we're doing is essentially storing key value pairs so these could have come in as a JSON file it could have been an XML file it could have been as a properties file it could be as something completely different but essentially everything gets stored in the same way and then we can manipulate this data to get it out in lots of different formats depending on who needs to use it so you're not rebuilding the same assets lots of times you're essentially giving yourself different ways to use the same data depending on what's going on um, as part of this you know we might be including things like infrastructure settings uh, load balances firewalls bit of cloud stuff maybe some leg legacy data as well it, you know the the list is almost endless but it all comes into the data model it all kind of gets loaded in there and we apply apply a series of structures to it once something's in the data model we start to track its history so over time I can see that originally about 30 items were loaded as part of my test environment and it's kind of grown um, releases new components new infrastructure stuff gets added stuff gets removed and Swiggle just tracks kind of the full history of what's going on there so at any point in time if you decide that you want to go and see right what happened in between version 47 and 48 um, we can just come in and, and understand you know what's been added and deleted so password was added a last name was added and the first name was changed from test to me right so very easy to understand that change why that's so significant is if at you know uh, two o'clock or whatever it was so if at uh, 10 past two things start working at two o'clock things start working again I I've at least got the ability to come and see what changed or equally if something was working it stopped working again show me what's changed what's the differences that are kind of happening in regards to this data um, we give a, a really nice graphical way of being able to understand what is currently deployed and what's assigned to a particular environment in this sense but if you think you could look from an environment's perspective you could look from an application's perspective you can understand like like so what's the assigned release and what's the the makeup of that release what's currently the assigned UI what are the settings that are assigned there why this is important is you typically especially when you get in, into applications in infrastructure the infrastructure is potentially owned by a different team to what the application is um, run by and equally the environments so if somebody for example were to change some of these the, these host details the impact of that could be across different teams different environments different settings etc etc so it just gives you visibility that if I change something here who do I need to potentially go and update or equally have they given me permission just to be able to do that automatically um, and you know I, I'm because I'm aware of all of the different things that exist so quite a nice way of being able to understand changes track changes um, track dependencies um, and understand the impact of change so you know what's changing why is it changing and so on and so forth um, one of the big things we've got as well inside Swigel is the ability to check for uh, data quality so I've got a, a library of different tests here that I can either choose to assign or that I can leave unassigned that will search for different types of data and whether I am meeting my standard or not so in this case I've got an error when I'm running my uh, my database check which is essentially telling me that I'm running localhost against a series of my environments. Now, I've turned this off for my test environment because I'm saying that for tests this is okay. But actually, if I was to run this against production, I would want to make sure that we're not just using localhost, that we've put fully qualified domains in there. Um, I can see it's searching for a particular database name that's not been found. So these are the types of errors that quite often slip through the net, especially if you haven't got kind of a process collecting configuration. And there's loads of different examples. It's kind of an extensible library. So, you know, no HTTP is going to check that we're, we're using HTTPS only. Um, there's some various levels, of, I think, like password checkers and that sort of stuff, making sure that we are, uh, I guess, checking the right things. And what I can also see here is there's an approval system within Swigel, so the ability to approve change. So you get the idea of prevention rather than deploying and then going and fixing issues as, as they arise. So I can see here that I've got a series of changes. So I've got three changes coming in. I've got a server name that's been updated. I've got some passwords that are being added and that type of stuff. And I can just see that, you know, I can just see visually that that password is not encrypted, but Swiggle is also going to tell me about that. Um, any of the the validations that we run will or that we build, essentially you can choose to 
automatically run against every single um, set of data and therefore you get an understanding very quickly of who what's broken the rules and, and so on and so forth so what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to fix some of these problems and I'll, I'll just take you through the the process of modifying data in Swigle. So you could just modify this back in a source directory and run it through a pipeline and automate it of course. Um, this is more more of a manual granular way of doing it I suppose. But if we say um, I can see this password here which was the one that was added um, let's just go and encrypt that particular value. Okay so it locks it away from human eyes uh, and opens it up to um, uh, to a more structured way of, uh, of dealing with it. Um, I can add in new keys, so if I wanted to add in um, something, I don't know, maybe a new URL, um, and it will just kind of put in a correct URL, uh, maybe it's gonna be off a AWS Amir server, something along those lines. Uh, I've already got a URL already down here. Um, but, uh, so it may be URL, 2.0, I don't know, terrible example. So you can add keys in, you can add values in. Generally you do this through files and there's a, an automatic upload process that you can kind of go and use. If you do it that way, Swigle will automatically kind of structure how it thinks the data should look and you can manipulate it after that. Um, so we've just made a couple of changes. What we could also maybe do is have a look at some of the, the machine learning elements of what Swigle does. So if we take a look at maybe some of these uh, these AWS servers for example. So what I've got here is a, an S3 server and Swigle's automatically typed the server and what that means is it's it's looking at these values and it's applying logic and consistency to it. So this particular set of data has been encrypted automatically, details that are required have been flagged so if, if I was to come in and remove some of these details that would flag as part of a change set that would flag to me to, to tell me that that's not something that we want to do so we can kind of set this back to, to public public read um, so if we take a look at this what have we got so this uh, RDS instance for example we can see we're we're running a, a small database class and therefore rather than having 12 in here should have um, a database size of less than 10 um, my Oracle EE -E looks like a spelling mistake to me. That should probably be Oracle XE. Yeah, so you can programmatically start to enforce different standards automatically using Swigle um, rather than having to rely on people to, uh, you know, not make mistakes, which um, if they're anything like me, it's, it's, that's a hard thing to do. So all of these changes get tracked in a change set. So we're, we're tracking all of these changes. Um, I'm going to approve these changes and that's going to go and submit it to Swigle uh, to go and check and double check for me. So as part of that process, we will see that this is this is the Eldorado.test that we've been working on. So it was updated a few seconds ago. I can see that my current stored status has got no warnings and errors, which is good. And that data that I'm adding, so the, the modification data that's coming in, doesn't have any problems with it. If there were warnings and errors, it would tell you here. Um, these are the, again the type of things that are typically automatically notified to teams to go and work out um, then as part of that uh, I can choose what I want to do with it so does this become my latest stored snapshot my latest thing to go and update uh, I think it absolutely does um, and I'm just gonna put a little tag and say you know I uh, fixed um, password and URL you know try and add in some some good details here what that means is that becomes now my latest snapshot that I can go and export. So there are tools, Chef, Puppet, Ansible's, um, et cetera, et cetera, that need uh, to be able to get data to work with. So if you if you imagine that um, I want to feed uh, Ansible some so the latest version of config, I'll give it version 1.49, which is the snapshot we just took. And say it wants it as a JSON file, we're essentially giving it a, this this uh, JSON as an API call that it can come in and retrieve the latest snapshot. If you're working with an earlier version, again, you can just go and pick and choose the data that you want, and depending what it is, will just depend on what data is returned to you. So 45, maybe somebody wants just one release back, so in 48, and you'll notice that the data is changing, often quite subtle changes, right? So the the URL, so on and so forth, but uh, the it's all it's all kind of 
uh, essentially a, a library, a history library of config. Equally, if you've got other tools that need it in different formats, you can just transform it into whatever is required. So again, applications, typically more properties and any files, configuration tools, sometimes YAML and JSON, but it's all just the same data that's being represented. So it's not like you have to have multiple versions of that data. It's all about having you know that same data reused and reworked. Um, and that reuse and reusability is kind of a, a big uh, a big win for, for our customers. Um, you can then apply your own custom exporters. So if you just want to return smaller data, very particular data, like out outputting the whole thing is, is fine for like an automation script, but maybe for a particular tool, it only wants to retrieve a, a single value or maybe 10 values. It doesn't need the full stack of config. V highly malleable, highly configurable to be able to do these types of things. So just uh, final kind of summary data comes in comes in from lots of different places your gits your bit buckets so on and so forth we structure it as a data model you apply logic you can then start to improve upon that data model as you wish um, we validate it so we go and make sure that we are checking and we are getting lots of green ticks rather than errors etc etc and then this data is used as part of a deployment to actually go and, and physically deploy and uh, be be used by someone or something uh, to to go and use that data um, at the pointy end, as it were. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out. That was kind of a, an introduction to, to Swiegel and its core capabilities.